Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In my last video, we talked about Kubernetes architecture. And in this one, we're going to build a website-like application to explore the most important concepts for Kubernetes. So, are you ready? Let's get started. Before we start, we need to have a Kubernetes cluster and command line tool to interact with the cluster. You might have experience working on Kubernetes on the cloud environment, like AWS EKS or Azure AKS. But for a very beginner, you can start with Minikube, which is a local Kubernetes setup. And by default, Kube Control, which is the command line tool, will be installed as well. Once you have your Minikube installed, you can easily use Minikube Start or Pause or Stop to control the Minikube cluster. Let's just quickly go through the usage of the Kube Control command. The command syntax is like Kube Control, Command, Type, Name, Flex. As we are building an application, the commands we're using most include Create, Get, Describe, Apply, and Delete. Kube Control Create is used to create resources, and Kube Control Delete is used to delete resources. We use Kube Control Get to list resources and describe to display the detailed state of the resources. Kube Control Apply is usually used to apply a configuration change to a resource. Of course, you can use it to create and delete resources as well. I have an article on media.com to show the detailed usage of these commands with lots of examples. Now, we are ready to build our application on Kubernetes cluster. Let's have a look at the diagram for the application architecture. The application we're going to build is a two-tier WordPress website with MySQL database. We will build everything in a separate namespace. Then we use persistent volume to store the database data, and we use config map and secret to store the database connection parameters. Then we build pods for MySQL database and WordPress applications, and we build services to expose these pods. Just a note here, we're going to create resources via YAML configuration file instead of standard input. Namespace. Namespace is like a separate virtual cluster within a single Kubernetes cluster. It helps organize and isolate resources, such as pods, services, and deployments, into distinct group. It enables access control and permission management for teams or users. It also prevents naming conflicts by allowing resources with the same names in different namespaces. Now we create our first YAML file for namespace. We name it demo app ns. Then we run kube control create commands with pointing to the YAML file. And then we have our new namespace created. All rest of the resources will be created within this namespace. Next. We need to create a persistent volume. There are concepts we need to understand first. Storage class. Storage class allows you to define different types or classes of storage provisions based on your specific requirements. Each storage class has a provisioner that determines what volume plugin is used for provisioning persistent volumes. You can use storage class to provision cloud-specific storage systems such as AWS EBS, Azure File, or Google Cloud Persistent Disk. For simplicity, we just use standard in our example. Persistent volume. Persistent volume is a cluster-wide storage resource provisioned by an administrator. It represents a piece of storage in the cluster, such as a physical disk, network attached storage, or a cloud storage volume. Persistent volume claim. Persistent volume claim is a request for storage. It acts as a binding mechanism between the user storage requirements and the actual persistent volume available in the cluster. In our demo, we would like to persistently retain the data in the database, which means that even if a pods or container is deleted, the data remains preserved. This is where I would utilize a persistent volume. So now we need to create a YAML file for persistent volume. We name it PV, and you can see we have namespace defined in the metadata. Also, as we explained earlier, we use standard storage class for PV creation. Persistent volume supports multiple types of access mode. With read-write once, PV can be mounted as read-write by a single node or a pod running on a single node at a time. This mode is typically used for scenarios where a single pod needs exclusive read-write access to the PV, such as a database running on a single node. There are some other access modes such as read-only many, read-write many, but we're not going to explain them now. You can check them out from here. 
Once we have PV created, we need to create a persistent volume claim to request the storage. We create another new YAML file for the PVC and run the kube control create command. Now let's just list the resources via kube control get commands. We can see the new PVC is here. The next step is to create a config map to store the database name and database user and secret to store database password. Config map is an object used to store non-sensitive configuration data that can be consumed by pods or other resources in a Kubernetes cluster. It can store key value pairs or hold entire configuration files as data. Secret is an object used to store sensitive or confidential information, such as passwords, API keys, and TLS certificates. It is encoded or encrypted to maintain their confidentiality. So secrets are similar to config maps, but are specifically intended to hold confidential data. Then we created another YAML file with config map and secret resource. We store database name here as demo DB, database user as DB user. Remember, we need namespace defined in metadata. Then we add database passwords in the secret resource. We cannot store the password in plain text. Instead, we need to save them as base64 encoded. Our password is my secret password, so we need to run command echo n my secret password pipe base64. Now you can copy this value in the YAML file for the secret value. Let's create the config map and secret using kube control create command. See the two resources are created. We can describe the secret resource and obviously we can't read the value directly. But if we describe the config map, we can see the values in the configuration. Now we are ready to create our database pod. This time we use deployment. So what is deployment in Kubernetes? A deployment is a high level object that provides a declarative way to manage and scale a set of identical pods. It ensures that the desired number of replicas of an application are running and provides mechanism for rolling updates and rollbacks. Within a deployment, a pod template needs to be created, which includes container image, resource requirements, environment variables, etc. A replica set is also defined, which maintains a set of identical replicas of pods defined in the template. Deployments enable your application with self-healing capabilities. It can perform health check on pods to ensure they're running correctly. If a pod fails the health check, the deployment controller automatically restarts or replaces the pod to maintain the desired replica count. Now, let's create a YAML file for the database deployment. I'll name it my circle and set the namespace demo app NNS. For the specs, I will set the replica value, which is one, as we only need one pod for database. You will see we set the replica as two for the WordPress application deployment in the following part. Regarding the container templates, we need to use MyCircle latest as the image. And for resource requirements, you could see limits and requests. So what are the differences? The request section specifies that the container requires at least 512 meg of memory and 0.5 CPU as the minimum amount of resources that the container needs to run properly. The limit section defines the container is allowed to consume a maximum of one gig of memory and one CPU. Regarding the environment variables for the database connection, we can set the value directly. Or in the example, we use value from to retrieve the data from config map and secret we created. As we use official MyCircle image, we can go to the Docker Hub to check how to set up the environment variables for the image. Okay, now you can see these are the environment variables we need. Then we set the container port to 3306. Finally, we need to mount the volume. We use the persistent volume claim that we created in the previous step. And within the container templates, we mount the volume and set the mount path. As it's shown here, we mount slash var slash lip slash my circle in the pod to the local storage slash data slash my circle on the node of the cluster. Then we run kube control create dash f with a YAML file. We can use kube control logs to check the logs of the pods as well. If we run kube control get all with namespace flag, we can see the pods, the deployment, as well as the replica set here. Service. A service 
is an abstraction that provides a stable network endpoint for accessing a set of pods. Service enables communication and load balancing between pods, allowing applications to be accessed reliably. A service is assigned a unique IP address and a DNS name within a cluster. Providing a stable network endpoint, it acts as a single entry point to access a group of pods that are parts of the service. Kubernetes supports different types of services based on the networking requirements, and the most commonly used includes cluster IP. This is the default service type. It exposes the service on an internal IP address within the cluster. Node port. This type exposes the service on a static port on each node's IP address. It makes the service accessible from outside the cluster. Load balancer. This type provisions an external load balancer to expose the service. It is primarily used in cloud environments with built-in load balancer support. We will use cluster IP for our MySQL database deployment as it is for internal and node port for WordPress application deployment. Now, let's add the database service in the database deployment YAML file. We can add three dashes to separate the resources within the YAML file. We just need to set the selector to app my circle and the port and target port to 3306, which is for port mapping purpose. Now let's run kube control apply dash f db dash deployment dot yaml. You can see my circle service is created. Okay, the database layer is done now. We're going to build our WordPress application layer. We also use deployment and service for this layer. But this time, we will set replica to two, which means there will be two pods running at the same time to take the traffic. Let's create another YAML file. Two more things to mention here. One of the environment variables is WordPress DB host. We don't need to get the IP address. Instead, we just need to use the value, which is the name of the service for the MyCircle database. For WordPress service, we use node port here. As we mentioned before, no port service type can expose the application on a specific port on each worker nodes in the cluster, which makes it accessible to external connections. Same as before, we can run could control create or apply to create the resources. Now we have our first application ready. We can run a minikube service command to fetch the minikube IP and a service node port for accessing the website. Let's just run Minikube service WordPress service dash n demo dash app dash ns dash dash URL. Let's visit the URL in the browser and now you can see the website is up. Once we set up everything for the installation process for WordPress, we can now see the WordPress website. Let's finally run a cook control get all commands. We can see one MyCircle pods and two WordPress pods. My circle service and WordPress service, which are different types, and the deployment and replica set are also shown here. Now, there you have it. We have covered a wide range of Kubernetes concepts while building our application. By understanding these fundamental concepts, you have a solid foundation for working with Kubernetes and deploying your own applications. I hope you can give me a like if you found the videos helpful and make sure you subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of them. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.